Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So question 15 is looking at the reaction of nitrogen monoxide with oxygen. Um, the rate equation is given. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we just have to complete the table. The order with respect to NO and the order with respect to oxygen, and you know it already, the order is the number, uh, the power that the concentration is uh, raised to. So if you look at the concentration of nitrogen monoxide, it is uh, raised to the power of two. So it means that it is second order. Oxygen raised to the power of one, that means it is first order. Okay, so um, the idea you just joined, we are looking at question 15. The overall order of reaction means the total. Okay, so far we have not talked about this overall order of reaction, but it's actually just um, you adding up all the orders of the individual reactants. So the, the overall would be three. Okay, um, I think that's quite straightforward and easy. Well, one mark, okay. Next part, two separate experiments are carried out at 30 degrees Celsius. They are different experiment with different initial concentration, but the temperature is the same. So you must remember something when temperature is the same, something should stay constant, okay? Um, to determine the rate of the forward reaction, okay? Use the data for experiment one to calculate the value and the rate constant K, okay? So we know the rate equation already. Rate is equals to K times by NO square times by oxygen. And we want to find K. So please find K first using, using the information on experiment one. And then we have to work out the units mole per dm cube per second over mole per dm cube squared and mole per dm cube. Okay, units, no matter how confident you are, I always have to write it down, okay? Even for myself, I, well, sometimes, you know, I can see it straight away, but knowing that I am careless, so I have to write it down to work out the units. So that's mole minus two dm six, second minus one. Okay, so please work out the value of K for me. Okay, uh, your answer for rate constant should be, uh, wait, where am I looking at? Sorry.
Kenapa balik balik? Uh, you should get eight three eight nine. Did you manage to get that? Okay, good. Eight three eight nine. Uh, and the units. Make sure you know how to work out the units as well. Now, calculate the value of N O in experiment two. Okay, so you will use the same rate equation. To work it out and the rate constant is the same. Okay, so same rate constant as experiment one, as long as temperature is the same. Okay, as long as they use the same temperature, then the rate constant will be the same, regardless of what uh, concentration you started with. Okay. So same thing. Um, this time we are working out, we want to rearrange uh, and O to become the subject. And because we are working out for the concentration of and O, then the unit is in mole per dm cube. Okay, so I will let you try that first and see if you can get the answer somewhere around 0 0.0120 or 1.20 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Okay, how is it going? Are you still um, calculating the answer? If you're done with that, I want you to skip um, part C because part C is just definition. Uh, what I want you to look at is the next part, which is on the mechanism of that um, per peroxo disulfate ions as to or per sulfate ions as 2 minus reacts with iodide ions without the presence of um, catalyst. Okay, so you've already looked at this reaction in the previous topic where Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus is um, used uh, as catalyst to this reaction because this reactions involve two negatively charged ions. Okay. Right. So this time uh, we're going away, uh, we're looking at a different system. Okay, different from the previous uh, part of the question. They give us the rate equation where rate is equals to K times the concentration of per sulfate as 2 2 minus and uh, to the power of one. So that means per sulfate is first order and also times by the concentration of iodide to the power of one. So iodide is also first order. And then what the question wants you to do is to suggest 
or write down the equations of the mechanism. Okay, so this mechanism is a two-step, two-step mechanism. So what can the rate equation tell us is that um, both of the species, both species appears. in the slow rate determining step, okay? And since, since both order or power is one, that means one, um, one molecule or mole appears in the step, okay? If the order is two, that means two molecules appears in the slow step. And three, order three, three molecules appears in the slow step, okay? Okay, so I always like to make my first step the slow step, okay? Um, I feel like it's easier, right? So that means the first step, I have my per sulfate S2O8 minus plus I minus, okay, to form something. This is something that, uh, again, is, it is not easy, okay? I tell you it is not easy. Uh, but we'll we'll just try our best, okay? Um, and I have to fix these numbers as one because the order is one. Even though I have two iodides here, okay, that means the second iodide will later appear on step two, okay? So just remember that when I add step one and step two, I will get the overall equation. So know the difference between overall equation which tells you from reactants to products straight away. And when we break it down into a few steps, this is called the mechanism, okay? So you need to look at the rate equation and the overall equation hand in hand, okay? What rate equation tells you is only about the slow step, all right? So, if there, um, whatever species that appears in the rate equation will appear in your slow step, the order will tell you the amount of each molecule appearing in the slow step only, okay? So I will just highlight that. This rate equation will only tell you information in the slow step, but, to work out our mechanisms, we need to bring these two information together, of course. Okay, so our products, right, will also appear in the products of my mechanism. Okay, so I've got product here, sulfate, and I've got iodine, all right? to iodine. If I put iodine here, can you see that I cannot balance it? Because on the left side, I can only have one iodide. And on the right side, I need two iodide. So that means I will put in my iodine later. Okay. Okay, it's not easy to see. <clears throat> Since I've got two sulfate here. So that means my sulfate must come here in the first product, okay? So I will form SO4 two minus. So that's this, the first product. Remember, I have two of them, of uh, two of that sulfate. I don't necessarily have to um, put two of them at this step yet because there's a step two which I can put my sulfate later on, okay? Now, I need something with iodine in my product as well, okay? So the next 
the other product would usually be an intermediate. So this intermediate does not appear in the rate equation, does not appear in the overall um, chemical equation. So it's sort of something that you have to guess, okay? But you don't just guess, you will work it out based on trying to balance the um, atoms as well as the charge, okay? So let's see. If I want to balance my atoms first, I need another sulfur, agree? Sulfur, and then my oxygen is also not balanced. I've got eight oxygen on the left side. So far, I've got four oxygen. So I need another four oxygen, okay? And then what else is not balanced? My iodine is not balanced. So I have SO4I. I don't know what that is, okay? But I know that it's my intermediate, all right? How did I come with this intermediate? Species used to balance the equation in step one. Okay, another thing is not balanced. There's something that's not balanced as well in my equation, the charge. Can you see here? Eh? Uh, oh, sorry, I'm missing a number there. S2082 minus, sorry. Okay, so the charge on the left side is three minus. The charge on the right side is now two minus. So that means I need one more minus one. Okay, so let's check. Sulfur, I've got two sulfur. Balance. Oxygen, I got eight oxygen, O4, and another O4, balance. Iodine, I've got one iodine, balance. And charge, Minus two, minus one to become minus three. Minus two, minus one to become minus three, okay? Now, a student may ask me, why do we only use one sulfate? Why don't we use two sulfate in one go? Okay, let's try. If I were to use two sulfate, okay, for example, uh, two sulfate. So, and then I need another species, intermediate, to balance. If you look at the number of sulfur, is balanced. Oxygen, two times O4 means eight oxygen, okay? I've also got eight oxygen, okay? I need iodide to balance the equation. And if I do this, that means my reaction is complete. There is no second step. Yeah? Can you see? If you just ignore this for a while, okay? Sorry. If you just ignore this for a while, and then um, we want to use two sulfate instead of one sulfate. Now, if I do this and balance my step one, it's the same equation as your overall equation. I don't know if you noticed that, okay? So that means there's no step two already our mechanism is complete, right? So we don't want that. We want our mechanism to have two steps. That's why always think about the formation of an intermediate, okay? Right, so next step, since our step one is balanced already, next step, intermediate is something that is short-lived. You produce it and then you immediately consume it. Okay, it has to be consumed or it has to be destroyed in step two. Now we think about the overall equation because step two is our final step. And step two is the step where we want to make sure that um, the mechanisms 
will be in line with the overall equation. Okay, so in the overall chemical equation, we've got S2O8 2 minus. So we've got that already. Okay, we've got two iodide. So far, we only have one iodide. Okay, we need to add on another iodide so that when we add them up, it becomes two iodide and it agrees with our overall equation. Okay. Um, okay, iodide done. Sulfate, we've got two sulfates, but so far we have only used one. I mean, not used one. We've only had one in the mechanism. So that means I need to add another sulfate. So you can see here, one sulfate, two sulfate will equals to two mole of sulfate. Okay. Okay. That's done. Do I have iodine in my product so far? Not yet. I don't have my I2. So I need to add I2. Okay. I repeat. All the reactants will add up to give you S2O8 2 minus and 2I minus. Okay, that's why you can see um, we've got one per sulfate and then we've got two iodide ions. Now, don't worry about the intermediate because they will get destroyed. Okay, and then my products is this. Okay. It should equal to the products in the overall equation as well. So I've got two sulfates and one iodine. Okay. And the intermediate SO4 minus will cancel out with the one on the left side. So I know that my mechanism is correct. Okay. So to check your mechanism, step one plus step two. For those of you who cannot see it, but I hope you can already see it, iodide plus SO4 I minus plus another iodide to form SO4 2 minus plus SO4 I minus plus another SO4 2 minus plus iodine. Okay, so you can cancel out the intermediate you can group your iodide together to become two moles. You can group your sulfate together to become two mole as well, and then iodine. So if you look at adding mechanism one and mechanism two, it should equal to your overall chemical equation. Okay, if it's not equal, that means your mechanism is not correct. So our rate determining step here is, of course, as I've already mentioned, it will be in step one, okay? Usually the step one is the most difficult um, part of the mechanism because step two is all about completing and making sure that um, you will um, be able to add your two steps mechanism and to get that as your final equation. With step one, you don't have a lot of guidance usually, okay? Especially um, with this part, the products. How do I know it's only sulfate? How do I know it's not two moles of sulfate? Uh, why is it not iodine? Okay, things like that you have to think about. Okay, so I will let you copy that down. Uh, for those of you who just joined, we are at question 15, okay, 15 part D.
Okay. <clears throat> uh, if you're done with that, uh, you can read the next part. Right, um, a large excess of peroxodisulfate, okay, a large excess of persulfate ion is mixed with iodide ions immediately after mixing. So that means at the very start of the reaction, just when you start the reaction, okay. So immediately after mixing, your I minus is 0 0.00780. So what does it mean immediately after mixing? at the very start of the reaction. Okay, so that means this is the initial concentration of iodide. Okay, under the conditions used, the half-life of iodide is 48 seconds. Okay, so that means T half. Calculate the iodide ion concentration 192 seconds after um, the persulfate per and iodide ions are mixed. So that means 192 seconds after the reaction, okay, after the start of the reaction. Uh, it means after the start of the reaction. Okay, so we want to know how many half-life is this? Okay, so since your T half is 48 seconds, we want to know how many half-life is this representing? So how do we find that? We take 192 divided by 48, and that's four half-lives. So we get four half-lives. Okay. So that means they want you to go through four successive half-lives starting from 0 0.00780, okay? T half, eh, sorry, time. At T0, your concentration is 0 0.00780. And then um, half-life is the time taken for the concentration to go down by half. So then you got 0 0.00390. Divide by two lagi, that's 0 0.00195. And the last one, last half-life, which is the fourth half-life, 0 0.000975, okay? Or that is also equivalent to 9.75. Oh, no, that's not the end yet. That's only three half-lives, okay? We need another one. Uh, divide by half of that number again is 4.0.000488. Okay, or it is equivalent to 4.88 times 10 to the power of minus 4. That is our fourth half-life. After the fourth half-life, T half 1, T half 2, T half 3, T half 4. Okay, so I'll show it to you. Um, the first half-life is 48 seconds. 
Next, 48 plus 48 would be 96 seconds. 96 plus 48, 144. 144 plus another 48 is 192. So you want this concentration. The concentration of iodide after 192 seconds, or as we said, after four successive half lives. Is that okay? So this question is a new style of question as well. We have not come across a question uh, like this. So try to read the question again uh, and understand what, the, what it is asking for. They want to know how much the concentration of your iodide has dropped after 192 seconds. We found that 192 seconds is the same as four times the half-life, okay? That's why we go through all this uh, first half-life, second half-life, third and fourth. Remember, they need to be successive. So it needs to be one after the other. You cannot just take 0 0.00780 divided by four. That's not correct, okay? Another way of seeing that is what you can do is you can take your initial concentration, 0 0.00780 divided by two because half-life, but since there are four half-life, we raise it to the power of four, okay? But if you cannot see the mathematical reason behind that, you can always go through this process okay if you want to know the concentration after uh, the third half-life you just do this 0 0.00780 over 2 to the power of 3 so we just check the answer 2 to the power of 3 is 9.75 times 10 to the power of minus 4 that's correct okay so 2 represents half, fourth represent uh, the number of half-life. <clears throat> but if you don't understand why, then I suggest you to not, you don't have to learn this, okay? I'll just go through the long process, at least you, you understand what's happening. Okay, uh, after you're done copying with that, I would like to go back to question. I found a question that I wanted to do. Uh, I think, let me just... Question nine is quite standard. Question... Question three. We will go back to question three. Okay, when you're done with this, we go back to question three, and then um, we are looking at the uh, reaction of hydrogen with nitrogen monoxide to form water and nitrogen. The following table shows the initial rate and the partial pressure of the reaction, uh, reagents. So partial pressure is just like concentration, but it is 
uh, for gases. Okay, so you will treat partial pressure, partial pressure, like you would treat concentration. Okay, so please have a look at that first and try to find the order with respect to each reactant. Um, and then, of course, explaining how we got the answer. Okay, I'll go back to question three. Um, which one is it? This one, okay. Right, so just to um, leave a note for the future you, treat partial pressure like concentration. Okay, so they want you to find the order of the hydrogen with respect to hydrogen and the order with respect to nitrogen uh, monoxide. Okay, so if you look at, so you know that I would always start with um, the first column, but if you can see experiment one and two, they keep the concentration of hydrogen or partial pressure, whichever, I'm just going to use the term concentration, but they change the concentration of nitrogen monoxide. Okay, so here it is sensible to work out the order for the nitrogen monoxide first. Okay, so uh, looking at experiment one and two, we want to work out nitrogen monoxide since uh, there's no change to the hydrogen fix, so we can focus on nitrogen monoxide alone. So if you look at this number, 1.60, and the second experiment, it's getting smaller. Now, it is up to you um, to find the increase or the decrease. Okay, In this case, I will take the bigger number, 1.60 divided by 0 0.80. Okay, so this time going from 0 0.80 to 1.60, that's a multiple of two. Okay, so if you take this, divide by this, your rate must also be the same, uh, same row divided by uh, the top row divided by the bottom row. Okay, do not do this. Uh, 160 divided by 0 0.80, and then in the rate, you take 3.75 divided by 1.5. That's wrong, okay? Always take the ratio together. So 160 over 0 0.80, 1.5 divided by 3.75, okay? So you will take 1.5 times 10 to the power of um, minus 7, divided by 3.75 times 10 to the power of minus eight. So I found that to be an increase in four. Did you all get that? Okay, so you can see that um, my nitrogen monoxide increased by two, the rate increases by two square. Do you agree? Four is equivalent to two square. Yeah. So that means nitrogen monoxide is second order. Okay. So how do we explain that? We will say uh, from experiment two and one. So we'll explain nitrogen monoxide first. Oops. Experiment. two and one, okay? So the partial pressure, make sure you write down P, not concentration. The partial pressure of NO increases by two. The rate increases by 
four. Therefore, uh, NO is second order. Straightforward, okay? Just straight to the point and then you just write down the order. Okay, now we want to work out the order of <clears throat> hydrogen. So I will just erase all the, maybe I should have kept that, okay. I want to choose an easy, um, what's an easy experiment? Oh, actually, I didn't realize that. I could actually use experiment one and three because the concentration of nitrogen monoxide is constant. Yeah, can you see that? Experiment one and three, the concentration of NO is constant, so I'll do that. So actually you could find the order of hydrogen first just now, okay? So I will use a different color. So I don't have to worry about my nitrogen monoxide because the, the concentration, the partial pressure is not changed. I just have to worry about my hydrogen, uh, 0 0.32 going to 0 0.64, okay? So that is um, an increase by two. So from 0 0.32 to 0 0.64, that's an increase by two. So I will also do the same. Uh, eh, sorry, sana, sana. Not going up, it should go down. Eh, no, no. Oh my God, I'm so confused. Okay, so that means uh, 0 0.32, I take the bigger number, which is 1.5 times 10 to the power of minus seven over 7.5 times 10 to the power of minus eight. And that is also an increase in two. Okay. Are you all okay so far? Yeah, so you can see that as the partial pressure of hydrogen increases by two, the rate increases by two as well. So to explain that experiment, we must quote the experiment. Experiment uh, three and one, okay? So the partial pressure of hydrogen increases by two. The rate increases by two as well. Therefore, hydrogen is first order. Okay, the increase in concentration and the increase in rate is directly proportional, or as we said, it's, it's the same. Okay, next, uh, write down the rate equation. Okay, and units of the rate constant. All right, we'll do that. Part two, this is part one. Rate is equals to rate constant K times by the concentration of, no, sorry, wrong. It's not the square bracket. P and O to the power of two. Okay, times by, P hydrogen to the power of one, okay? Or you can always start with the partial pressure of hydrogen first times by the partial pressure of uh, nitrogen monoxide, no problem, okay? Next, they want you to work out the units of rate constant K. So K is equals to rate over um, P and O square times P H two to the power of one. Okay, you can leave out the number one. 
Um, I don't know if you notice, but the unit of rate is given as atmosphere second minus one. So that means the concentration is now not in mole per dm cube because we're looking at partial pressure. So we should, oops, sorry. So we should be looking at ATM as our unit, okay? So rate is ATM S minus one over ATM square and just ATM. And so we cancel out, we bring this up to become ATM minus two, S minus one. And that is your units of rate constant. Okay, so you just have to be careful. You need to read the question. Sometimes it's not always in mole per dm cube. Sometimes it can be in atmosphere, ATM. It can be in Pascal, PA, or it can even be in grams per dm cube. Okay, so make sure you follow the question. <clears throat> okay, next. Um, show how overall stoichiometric equation one can be derived from the three equations for the individual steps given above. Okay, so what's equation one, right? So equation one is our overall chemical equation. Whereas when you see step one, step two, step three, these are your mechanisms. Okay, and this is your overall chemical equation. They call it the overall stoichiometric equation. Okay, but it's actually, you know, just overall chemical equation is fine. So how is the mechanism related to equation one? We add up all the steps. Okay, step one step two and step three. So all the reactants on one side and all the products on the product side. Okay, so let's do that. I will move to the bottom of the page. So part three now, I will add up all NO plus NO plus H2 plus oxygen plus H2 plus N2O to form N2O plus O plus H2O plus N2 plus H2O, okay? First thing to note is who your intermediate is. Whoever is not in your chemical equation will be your intermediate, right? So you can see N2O is not in my chemical equation. So N2O could be an intermediate. Single atom O is also not in my chemical equation. So these two are possibly intermediates. Okay. Right, so let's add this all up. We've got, uh, oops. Nitrogen, nitrogen, so two nitrogen monoxide. Uh, the oxygen cancel out, oxygen atom cancel out. The N2O cancel out as well. We've got two hydrogens to form. We've got two H2O plus one N2. So that's how you get the overall equation. Okay, show how the overall uh, can be derived. Okay, so you just show it. Literally, you add up all the three equations and then you cancel out and then you simplify your answer. And that's already um, showing how to derive the overall chemical equation. Okay, and then I will want to look 
at part four. Looking at part four, I will uh, need to look at the mechanism. So we'll go back up. Okay, so I will erase whatever I have here. And then uh, my red equation study was uh, NO. Okay, let's see. Red equation is equals to K P of NO square plus, uh, plus sorry, times P of hydrogen. So what my rate equation suggests is that NO and H2 appears in the slow step, okay, or the rate determining step. The order tells me how many times, okay? So two NO and one H2 appears in this step, okay? And usually only one slow step in a mechanism, right? You cannot have, so if you look at step one, we've got two molecules of NO, right? And then in step two, we've got hydrogen. So we cannot say step one and step two are the slow step. No, there's only one slow step, okay? If we say it's step one, we've only got the nitrogen monoxide. We don't have the hydrogen. So step one cannot be the slow step. Step two, let's see step, step two. Step two, we've got one molecule of hydrogen. Yes, and one oxygen atom, which is our intermediate. Intermediate don't appear in the rate equation, okay? So we need to find what makes the oxygen atom. So we go back, okay? So we go back to the oxygen atom and the oxygen atom is actually coming from the NO and NO, okay? So that means step two is the slow step. I'll show you why. So if I write down rate is equals to K times partial pressure of hydrogen times by partial pressure of oxygen, now remember, oxygen is inter intermediate. So I cannot write it in the rate equation, okay? But I can change since oxygen atom is made up of NO and another NO. So that means plus, okay? So what I can write is rate is equals to K P of my hydrogen times P of NO square. Okay? So that means step two is my slow step. Explanation. Suggest which of the three reactions in the mechanism. Explain your answer. Okay. So step two is the uh, rate determining step. Since it involves H2, oops, and O, which is form from NO. This agrees with 
uh, this agrees with the rate equation. Okay. 